to hear you, don't cuss. <laughs> All right. That's right. Well, a pastor told y'all, my name is Brent. I'm a faithful believer in Jesus Christ. Yes. I had a lot of struggles in my life. Addiction, suicidal thoughts, actions, grief, depression. Uh, I'd just like to share a little bit of my story with y'all. The first 17 years, they were pretty normal. I don't want to really talk about that. Good life. Went to Catholic school. Always had knowing God in my life. Just chose to ignore it later on. Uh, what I really want to touch up on is the last 23 years. When I was 17 years old, four days before my 18th birthday, my daddy got married. I rebelled. I questioned God. I thought to myself, if there's a God, how could he take my daddy from me when I need him so much? I was just starting to become an adult. I lost a father figure. I lost a friend. I lost the man that I respected in my life, the man that I feared, the person that could keep me straight. Um, after that, it was it was just some dark times, a lot of dark roads. I no longer had nobody in my life that I feared. I wasn't scared of God because at the time, I rejected him. Um, I fell victim to the guilty pleasures of the world. Drugs, alcohol, you name it, I did it. Um, a lot of empty promises the yeah. devil made Come on. in my life. And that's what he does. Yes. Yes. And I can tell you right now, not one of them, not one was fulfilled. Yeah. All he did was take everything that I love. Yes, he does. And I a treasure. And he took it away from me. Yeah. And he didn't do it once. He did it twice. I had a house. I was on my own before. I had two vehicles. A uh, great, great job in a plant. I had a bass boat. I had three wheels, four wheels. I just bought everything a, a guy could want at a decent age. Good parents, good grandparents, great family. And they're still here for me today. Yeah. And I'm thankful for that yeah. because I put them through so much. Y'all just don't even know. It's like the boy that cried wolf. Yeah. You know, they'd always had my back. And I love y'all for that. No matter what I did, but sooner or later, just like the boy that cried wolf, my words were empty. Yeah. It wasn't until I started walking, walking a walk, you know, I had to show these people that I love, that I was serious. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I've been broke, homeless, Incarcerated, that's why I met Pastor. Yeah. I gave Mr. Gero and them hell for God knows how many years. <laughs> I mean, he walked in a church tonight and I'm, I ain't gonna lie, I got nervous. Last time I, <laughs> last time I saw him, I was like, <laughs> But it goes to show you, you know, people can change, you know? Amen. It's just, it's when you're willing to change. Yeah. That's right. Change occurs in people's life. Sometimes some people are fortunate. They can change just because they want to change. But a lot of times in life, it takes you losing something that's dear to you yeah. in order for you to make that change. Yeah. If it doesn't challenge you, chances are it's not going to change you. That's true. I've been beaten down to the point of wanting to die. Yeah. Two suicide attempts. I don't know where my mom would be right now if it wouldn't be for me. I love you so much, mom. And I lost 
lost all hope at one point in my life. But that's not a bad place for anybody to be. And I want to explain that. When you lose all hope, all you have is faith. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Amen. And God is attracted to the broken. Yes, he's, not, he he's not here for the proud. No. He's here for the sinners. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. you know, he's here for people that's struggling Amen. that's going through things Amen. Yeah. Amen. and he's going to build you back up if you ask him yeah. yes. you know uh, I pray a lot and you know in my prayers I ask God for strength God give me difficulties to make me strong yeah. I ask him for wisdom God gave me problems to solve. <laughs> I asked him for prosperity. God gave me the brain and the brown to work. Yeah. I asked for courage. God gave me dangers to overcome. I asked for love. God gave me troubled people to help. Yeah. Yeah. I asked for favors, and God gave me opportunities. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I didn't receive nothing I asked for, but I received everything I needed. Yeah. yeah. When you pray, you need to be careful. Because God's not always going to answer your prayers in the way you're expecting it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes you yeah. just got to sit and be still and know that he's God. Yeah. And when you sit and you're still and you listen, that little voice in your head, that's a conscience. That's not just a conscience, that's a God conscience. Yes, it is. When you're praying and you're in the spirit, the little thoughts that come, that's yes. him talking to you. Amen. Yes, you need yeah. to acknowledge that. Yes, yeah. amen. Where am I now? <laughs> Take your time. Take your time. On, like I said, my little brother. Boy, that was rough. That was that was my best friend. He was a brother too. But as y'all know, I lost my dad at a young age. My little brother was five years old. I was almost a father figure to him. And Lord knows I failed miserably. There's a lot I could have did different than I wish I would have. But that wasn't part of God's plan. So, I, you know, my little brother passes. I end up going to rehab. In rehab, I learned a lot. You know, pretty much I had to do it because I had two choices. And the jail wasn't really one of them. The two choices I had was either I was going to change or I was going up with it. Yeah. Because that's the road I was, I was heading down. Yeah. Yeah. But the, be the beautiful thing about all that, well, let me get back. Let me rewind. While I was in rehab, something else happened. I'm in class one day, and all of a sudden, my chest got tight. I had a mild stroke. I woke up, I don't remember, I remember falling down in class. I don't remember the elevator, I mean, the ambulance ride. I don't remember getting in the hospital. I don't remember shaving my chest, looking up all these wires to me. All I remember was that I saw a vivid picture, and it was my little brother. And he was right there standing with his street bike jacket on, his blue jeans, and his little, his little, little biker shoes. And I remember seeing the background, and this, they had people in the background, but they wasn't vivid. I could see figures. It almost looked like we were by a camp somewhere. And I remember reaching out to him, and he just looked at me with this little smart ass mouth like he. You just gotta know my little brother. She, she tells me pretty much, you can't come. And then I wake up. And I got mama laying outside the bed crying. I got Mr. Gino, my stepdad, laying there crying. And my blood pressure was, what it was, 80 over 50 or 50 over 80, something like that. My body was shutting down from depression. I didn't, I literally didn't want to be here no more. I was tired of suffering. Uh, that happened. 
21 years to the date that my dad died. October 24th. So, I'm going to get back to rehab. While I'm in rehab, I do good. I do get through all my classes and stuff. Well, it's time to leave. Guess what day I left rehab? November 16th, my little brother's birthday. Dates, things, things like that, that's not a coincidence to me. Somebody was trying to show me something. Yeah. It was on me to pick it up and realize what it was. Now, let me explain God to you. Let me explain Jesus. Mm -hmm. He didn't care how far I went no. or to what extent or to what amount of damage I did. All he cared about was when I said I was done. Yeah. Yeah. I asked him to take this whole addiction head over my life, away from me. And that's when he stepped in. Amen. I've been free from addiction for a year and a half now. Come on. Amen. I'm also free from the bondage it had over my life. Yeah. Let me explain. A lot of people don't realize how much time you waste in your addiction. Yeah. I was an addict for 23 years. A lot of time, I wake up and you wake up, all right? Nephews, nieces got this going on, they got that going on, family got a barbecue, they got a birthday party, we go on a vacation, whatever it might be. You're not going, to, if you're an addict, like I was, you're not going until you get your fix. So guess what? I'm late for birthday parties. I'm late for soccer games. I'm late for baseball. I'm late for dance recitals. Late for vacation. Late for family gatherings. Because I didn't have my fix. And sometimes that fix didn't come at 8 o'clock in the morning when I called for it. It might have been 8 o'clock at night. Sometimes I didn't even show up. Sometimes it didn't come till the next day. That's 12 to 24 hours right there. Over the 23 years I was an addict, I wasted seven years of my life. I was selfish to the people that love me the most. Amen. The people that do anything for me. Mm -hmm. I heard, I know I did. I got a message for y'all. A selfish and chaotic person I once was. I'm not him no more. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. God really does save you yeah. if you ask me. Yeah. He's waiting on you. Yeah, he is. And he has so much more to offer you than the empty promises of the devil. Amen. Yeah. Yes. He restored a life that was once destructive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he gave love to a soul that was once lost. Yeah. Promise in a world full of doubt. He can and will remove all shortcomings and restore order to your life. Yeah. If you repent and you sincerely yeah. ask him to. Yes, he will. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to struggle. No. He has so much more to offer you than the empty promises of the devil. Yeah. I won't promise you it's going to be easy, but I will promise you it's worth it. Amen. Yes, amen. amen. Like I said earlier, if it doesn't challenge you, it's not going to change, gonna change your That's chances right. at all. Right. So I encourage you to stop being selfish. Give yourself a chance to become who you're supposed to be yes. and who God wants you to be. Amen. 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 Your past does not have to define you as a person. Amen. That's right. There's a reason why the rear view mirror is so small and the front windshield is so big. Because right. where you're going is more important than where you've been. Amen. That's right. That's right. A couple of verses from the Bible that helped me get through Come on. some of these tough times. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, Come on. which are called by my name, yes. shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face turn and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them from heaven. Yes. And I will forgive their sin yes. and I will heal their land. Yes. He's got healing for you. Yes, he does. All you got to do is ask him. Yes, amen. 
another verse, 2 Corinthians, probably one of my favorite verses, chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, Christ. he is a new creature. Yes. Old yes. things are passed away, yes. all things yes. become new. Yes. 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 That's a promise right there for y'all. Yes. If you want something different, there it is. Yes. Yes. Asking for it, all things become new. Yes. You don't have to be the person you used to be. Yes. Amen. That's right. That does not have to define you as yes. a human being. Amen. 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 That's about all I got. I mean, I love y'all. That's good. And I want to take this time to apologize to my family. Y'all been there for me through so much. And I've let y'all down so many times. I just want y'all to know that the person I used to be, I'm not no more. Y'all got a brother. Y'all got a son. You got a grandson. You got a nephew. You got a cousin that loves you. You got a best friend. You got a family if you want one. Yeah, Amen. that's awesome. <laughs> All right. All right. I love all y'all. Thank you, God bless you. said the Lord's Prayer before? Raise your hand. Amen. How many has somebody said you need to go say all these our fathers because you were bad? <laughs> <laughs> I want to say something about that and I'm going to close out this meeting. Jesus said in the scripture to his disciples, he said, when you pray, pray after this manner. I'll say it in English that we understand. He said, when you pray, pray like this. This is an example. He didn't say to say the Lord's Prayer. He said to pray like this. Pray yeah. the Lord's Prayer. And he gave us an example of how to pray. Yeah. The first thing that he said to say, when you start your prayer, you don't start saying, God, I'm sorry. God, help me. God, anything. He said, the first thing I want you to say, and I want you to say it with me, our Father, Father which art in heaven, Awesome, hallowed, it says. It means incredible. Yes. It is your name. Yeah. Yes. I want to say this to you. I have three kids. I have a child that's in prison in Florida. Had addiction. Grant's giving me a lot of hope for my, my son. Yes. I've had kids. Nobody's immune from trouble. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Doesn't amen. matter if you're a pastor. You look at people with their ties and white shirts and you think they're all everything is perfect in their life and I'm going to tell you something oh, no. that don't exist in yes, the world right. that's, that's a right. facade yes. but the Lord said the first thing I want you to say when you say a prayer is our father I don't know a lot about a lot of things but I know what it means to be a dad yeah. and I want you to ask yourself a question Miss Belinda when are you going to look at your son or your daughter and say that's it no nope. no nope. never, never. Never, never. Ask yourself that question. When are you going to say that's enough? You may have to distance yourself from a, for a season, but there is never, as long as I have breath in my body, going to be a day when I give up on my kids. Yeah. Yeah. And so the woman says, he says, I want you to do this. Before you say anything else to me, I want you to look up at me. And the first thing I want to come out of your mouth is my father, yes. which are in heaven. Yeah. I want you to look up and I want you to realize that you have a father up above yes. who will never give up That's right. on That's you. Right. Yeah. That's right. He will never stop listening to you. That's right. Just like my kids have hurt me and your kids have hurt you if you have any. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
There is never enough for me to stop. And I think that's why God wanted us to say that first. Because he wanted us to understand who we are dealing with when we open our mouth to pray. Brent, incredible man. Absolutely incredible. And what's more incredible than Brent's words is watching the transformation of his life. A lot of people talk the talk, but not a lot of people walk the walk. That's true. An old friend of mine said one time, the best evidence of a changed life is a changed life. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you something, Brent has had an absolute life change. Yes, amen. It's incredible. Listen, we love you. What we're going to do right now is we're going to say the serenity prayer. We're going to end our meeting. And after this, uh, if you uh, want to join Celebrate Recovery, you can stay in here, and I will do our 101, and I'll just explain to you how it all works. If you already were here last week and you want to go into an open share group, we have two groups for women, one for chemical addiction and one for life issues, and we have two groups for men, one for chemical addiction and one for life issues like rage, anger, jealousy, pornography addiction, anything that's not chemical addiction that you want to deal with. And so when we're finished, if you'd like to be a part of one of those groups, we have a binder for you. If you if you came last week to 101 and you want to join, we have a binder for you, and we will break up into these groups. If you if this is your first time here tonight, and you want to know more about CR, I'll take when everybody goes off to their respective groups, just stay here, and I'll take a couple of minutes, and I'll explain more to you about all the nuts and bolts and how this works. If you if you're just here for Brent's testimony, you don't want to join, or you're from out of town, my wife has prepared a meal next door in the coffee house and we're all going to be over there shortly if you want to just go ahead and go over there and uh, be a part of that you can do that after okay yikes we have a group going on over there mm. okay so we're going to have about a 15 minute break and if you don't smoke you can stand out there with all the smokers and hang out in the front <laughs> and uh and we'll have our open share group for just a minute. I'll do my 101. It'll just take us a couple minutes. And then we'll all meet up next door for a great time with some spaghetti and garlic bread. All right. Did you guys enjoy this tonight? Yes. Yeah. Very refreshing. So, Kurt, come on up. And, uh, I'm sorry. Jody's doing it tonight. Jody's going to close us out with our serenity prayer. Why don't we all stand together? Let me get it up on the board. You can speak. Say something good. Okay, Brent, that was amazing. Thank you so much. And um, it's just amazing to see. Um, I was here when Brent came, and um, I am married, so don't take this the wrong way, but I fell in love with Brent as well. Um, me and my husband both, we adore Brent. Um, he actually, this is my son, and he, I said, Brent, do you um, know anybody hiring? Immediately, he got my son a job, and I, I still appreciate that. Um, he's, he has spoken many times to my son about the Lord and about different things. And, man, I am so grateful for that. Um, you've been a true blessing to me and my family, my son. You've been a blessing to our church. Yes. And, yeah. Amen. man, you Amen. just, I could cry all over again. It's just, it's great to hear um, a testimony that God has changed your life completely. And... I just, I love you, Brent. You have a huge heart, man. I see you just bringing people in all the time. Yes, um, amen. You're just an awesome man of God. And, man, we just love you around here. And I just, I, I just yeah. want to thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Is there any prayer has always been one of my favorites um, because it just, Man, if you don't know what else to pray, look up the serenity prayer and pray the serenity prayer because it does um, speak volume. Um, I remember being a, um, a young Christian and you just sometimes don't even know what to pray. And this prayer, um, just it can change your life. Um, so if y'all want to all just pray it together. Yes. Um, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, in 
enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking, as Jesus did, the simple world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever. Amen. Amen. But just, guys, if, seriously, just pray that prayer. Because sometimes we can't change things, but God can change things. And sometimes we don't know what we can change. And, but let me tell you, God can change things. So, yes, love does. you guys. Thank you all for coming to Thank you. Thank you very much. If you want to be a part of 101, if you just want to listen to 101 and you don't even want to join, you just want to stay in here, you can do that. If you want to go outside and hang out, you can do that. So we'll, if you were here last week and you want to join, why don't we just, you can go right through that door and Jody will direct you to the group that you need to go to. And so if you were here last week and you want to join CR, just step right through that door and Jody and the, uh, the, the, the CR team will help you find out where you need to go for your open share group. If you want to stay in here with me for just a few minutes, I'll talk to you about Celebrate Recovery. And if you want to go outside and hang out for a few minutes, you can do that. We'll be ready to have our time of food and fellowship in just a few minutes. Mr. Tony, man, thank you for coming Thank you so much. Thank you. You come back. You can be a part of it. Help us. Man, we love that. Okay. Beautiful. I have time I'll have a chance to share with you. Yeah, we'll have to do that. I want to get to know you. I'm glad you're doing something for our community, AA. So we need to sit down and talk. Maybe if you want to come next door after we we'll talk. Yeah. You can just stay here and listen to her one if you want to. You stay in here with me. We'll be really bad. Yes. Yes, if there's new people. Oh, taking a picture. I did. Yeah.